Hello and welcome. It's amazing to have you watch our services. Messages always coming directly from Pastor Aki, Aki Pelu. And I'm 100% sure that you're going to be blessed while watching our video. Don't forget to share our videos to people so they can be partakers of God's glory. Share, like, comment, and don't forget to subscribe. The bell is just there, just click it. I'm going to meet you at the end of the service. God bless you. Come on, break out in tongues and give him praise. Break out in tongues and give him thanks. first night. Feel us again like you did in the second night. Yesterday is gone. Today we are empty again. We want to be filled by you. We want to be filled by you. Feel us Lord. Feel our cup. Feel our cup till we run over. Let every flesh die. Bring an overflowing of your spirit upon us. Let today again be that statement that says, This is that day that the prophet Joe spoke about. We receive encounters tonight. We receive spirit being encounters, angelic encounters. We receive the spirit of the just man made perfect in this meeting and Christ in it will be glorified. We give you praise and glory. Somebody give the Lord praise tonight. Come and give him praise, give him praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Give your neighbor a high five tonight and tell them welcome into God's presence. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Please be seated. Oh, thank you, Lord. We'll be filled again tonight. Amen. How many of you are ready to be filled again? We've been getting filled first week and second week. And we are going to be filled again. It says we, Peter says that what was going on with us is not just an unusual or an abysmal heavenly discharge. It's not just a group of people coming together just to make a mess of their lives. He said, that's not why we are gathered. He said, what is happening to us today is that which was spoken. And how do you pr bring out that which was spoken? By praying in the Spirit. Do you remember? So every time you pray in the Spirit, you are trying to bring out that which was spoken. Or else that which was spoken will keep resting inside of you. You will know you have a glorious destiny, but you won't touch it. 
and honestly sincerely you feel it by the power of the spirit that you are more than this but you will stay like that what you need to do is to ensure that you push that which was spoken by the prophet out and every man we are all beneficiaries of utterances I remember we talked about utterances can either be spoken or by what or they can be sung so you're either singing an utterance or you're speaking an utterance so tonight I this is the part three so I may not be able to do so much of a recap I may not be able to do so much of a recap But I will just do one simple recap to help everybody, to differentiate everybody, to stay connected. And we go to what we want to look at tonight. Uh, so tonight we'll do some practicals. Who should speak in tongues and how to get people filled in tongues. Amen. So you, you, you'll be the one to do the work. So if you can't speak in tongues, you will speak in tongues. And you will get people filled and everybody will be filled. Amen. Glory to God. So let's take a little quick uh, recap. Go to, let's start from Isaiah 28 verse 11. I think that's a safe place. The first place tongue was mentioned as connected to speaking in tongues. Isaiah 28 verse 11. And you see if, if your hand is on the system, you can go to Joel chapter 2 also. Just cue it in Joel chapter 2. I talked about it the last days here. And um, we now end it in Acts chapter 2 and from verse 1 to 6. So he says that, but that's exactly, so let's do King James. Because this is going to be talking about syllable, but it's, it's bringing out the, the original Greek, which is tongue. So for which stammering lips, let's start from 10. So he would first give a little um, explanation of the people that he was talking about. Let's start from verse 9. Verse 9 will be fine. Right. So it says that, whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand what? doctrine. What is doctrine? The what? What's doctrine? It's just an English word. Teaching. Yeah. So who's going to understand that doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Verse 10. For precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Verse 11. For with a stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to his people. So he speaks with a stammering tongue to his people. So this was God trying to quote something in the Old Testament. I mean, I have a feeling that speaking in tongues was going to be introduced in the Old Testament. But they didn't get it. God was saying that I speak to my children with stammering lips. But when they got to verse 12, you know, a lot of conversation began to happen. Then the learned says that I'm not learned enough. The one who is learned says I'm not that learned. And there were a lot of conversation. So they were bringing logical conversation out of a spiritual matter. Then somehow it couldn't work. Then I have a feeling that it was small good to Joel. So let's go to Joel chapter 2 now. Let's go to, we're done with this. Joel chapter 2. Start from verse 25. Let's have, we are going to have a long read tonight. I want us to have a long read. And let me tell you why I want us to have a long read. Every time God wants to open your understanding, he takes you through the scripture. So there's something an understanding does. An understanding just open up, it opens up your heart. When it opens up your heart, then you see exactly what is supposed to be there. So I'm going to restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten, the canker worms, the pactor pillars, the palmer worms, and great army which I sent amongst you. Verse 26. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. Praise the name of the Lord, for the Lord has dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be what? Ashamed. That's somebody's word. Somebody say amen. And ye shall know that I'm in the midst of Israel, that I'm the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. Verse 28. See what 28 says. So, and it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. In that day, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And the word pour out my spirit is, is just simple like when you have a, a, a vessel, you have a jar that is filled up and you have empty jars, so you want to pour. So when you are pouring, so it means that there's, there's a vessel that is pouring into the one that does not have. So God attains that posture. I'm the one that is full of the spirit. 
So God is not limited in spirit. He is the embodiment of the spirit. He's got a seven spirit. So he pours everything into us. So anybody who would receive what he's pouring must be an empty vessel. God is full. You can't be full. Then you are a fool. And guess what? Remember Jesus told them that when, whatever he tells you to do, you do. And Jesus said, get me just. We're going to pour into them, right? As he began to pour into them, it's because they were empty. That's why he was pouring into them. There were some that were full and he couldn't take more. What did he say? He said, set them aside. When you are full, God sets you aside. The people that God pours into freshly are the people that are empty. So you know what you need to do? When he's pouring into you, just make sure you are dissipating it. That's why you must keep being filled every day. You know why? Because if you just stay there, you will be full and you will be set aside. So you can't say you were full last week. You've got to be hungry today. Even if you are filled in the, in the morning and you pray the Holy Spirit, you need to be filled. You need to be hungry right now or else you can't receive. So in that day, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And it says, and all your sons and daughters, they shall begin to what? Prophesy. Right? Now look at this word. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, number one. Number two, and your sons and daughters, they will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams and your young men shall see vision. Four things were spoken of in this place. Let's check the accuracy of that statement. Oh, let's go to verse 29. Then we'll go and look at the accuracy in Acts chapter 2. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaidens, in these days I'm going to pour out my spirit. Trying to say that everybody... They were all filled with the Spirit. Whether handmaidens or young men or old men and those who can see visions or prophesy. He said all of them were filled. Verse 30. And look at this. He mentioned four things that will happen in that day. Four things that will happen that day. Then he now said these are the signs that will go with. That when that day comes you will know. You can't. There are many days that can look like it, but you just need to pay attention to the things that comes with this day. Then you will understand that this is exactly the day that was spoken about. So he says that in that day, I'm going to show wonders in the heaven. Something will happen in the atmosphere, the heavens and the earth. And the first thing that will go down is blood. After blood, you are going to see what fire, and after fire, you're going to see what smoke. You will see them in that order. So the first fulfillment, let's take the fulfillment from verse 30, then we'll not take it to verse 29 from Act of Apostle chapter 2. Go to Act chapter 2 and verse 1. So in Act of Apostle chapter 2 verse 1, before Act of Apostle Jesus had died and his blood had been shed on the cross of Calvary. Are we together? So it means that the first sacrifice had been done. The first thing that will happen is that blood will go down. After blood, what's supposed to happen? Fire is going to come down. So in the day of Pentecost, was fully come. And they were all gathered together in one place. And I told you that that was a guest house. It was an hotel. So you understand that. So, and then suddenly, there came a sound from heaven. So something will be disturbed in the heaven. Like he said. So there was a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it, it filled all the house where they were sitting. Now hold on. Go back to verse 2. Go back to verse 2. Now, it filled the whole house. Suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house. Beautiful. Go to verse 3 now. And there appeared unto them cloves of what? Tongues as of what? Fire. So, the blood goes. After the blood, you, how do you know that this is the day that was spoken by the prophet? Because any day you can hear sound in the heavens. But even the day you hear the clouds tingling and everything shouting, did blood go down? So it could just be normal rain. It could just be normal rain. I think it was last week Pastor Matthew was telling me that the, the greatest thunder he has seen in his life happened to him two weeks ago and something happened in Lekia. People were scared and he said he was really scared that his heart was palpitating that he had never seen that kind of thunder in his life. But that was just normal thunder. Now blood had gone down. Then he says that there appeared unto them a cloven tongue as of fire. So if he says it appeared unto them, so if I say something appeared unto you, that means that the, the audience saw it and the writer saw it, right? So they saw it, they saw it. And remember he says that that day is going to be, this is how it's going to be accompanied. Men shall see visions. So for something to appear and it sat on them and they saw it, it means they are seeing visions. That means they are beginning to see spiritual things. So accuracy of the things of the spirit. 
So he says that, and Toby took us on fire, and he sat upon each of them. How many of them? Each of them. That was the explanation of the son shall see, your daughter shall prophesy. These ones will dream dreams. And he now went on that verse and said, even your handmaidens shall not be left out. Trying to say that this thing sat upon every one of them. Everybody. Verse, verse 5. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, the Jews, the devout man out of every nation under the heaven. You know, and verse 6, we now began to talk about how this thing happened. And don't forget we said that Pentecost, Jesus had nothing to do with Pentecost. The Holy Ghost had nothing to do with Pentecost. Pentecost is just a feast. There are three feasts in the Bible. Feast of weeks, Feast of Pentecost, and what is called the Feast of Ingathering. So this was the Feast of Pentecost. It takes 50 days. And because it takes 50 days, they take 49 days for their feast. And the last day, the 50th day is the day where they just dance. And they just it's like their party to, to finish up everything. So the Jewish will gather for that. So on that day of Pentecost, it wasn't as if the Holy Ghost decided had something to do with that day. He just chose that that's the day that he wants to come down. So, and to prove to you, some people were gathered in the upper room while some people were having their what? Feast. The people who were having their feast are those that came for Pentecost. Those are the people called Pentecostals. The people who got the Holy Ghost are not Pentecostals because they did not come for the feast of Pentecost. So as they were experiencing the Holy Ghost one place, the Pentecostals were the ones seeing them and saying, these guys are, are drunk. Right? You know, that's why I said that, it's, that teaching I did the first time, it was a deep one. I can't say it before, Bishop, when you get that, Christians did not receive the Holy Ghost. Um, Jews did. We're not Pentecostals. But in context, there must be a reason why we have Pentecostals. Glory to God. Because you cannot you cannot change. Glory to God. This is that which was spoken by the prophet and it happened exactly. So, like I said, I want to run us through scriptures that we're going to have another experience of his spirit. So, those predictions were true. So, go back to Acts chapter 2. The same place we are teaching from. Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. I'll point out a few things again. So that by the time we are done with these four weeks of training, you will understand that Acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 4 is a very powerful thing. So go to verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, the Bible says they were all in one accord. In which place? In which place? In one place. They were all in one place. They were all in one place. In fact, before I go to Acts chapter 2, let me do a recap of something. So I will explain what this one place means. So that you understand that every time we are in a one place like this, you should know what to expect if we are in one place. It's always a dangerous place to be. Except you don't understand the move of the Spirit. That's when you would just think that it's just a place to have a social hangout and be cool. There's something that happens in one place where you come to. But let's go to Mark chapter 16 and verse 15. I don't want to rush. Let me do the teaching well. Mark chapter 16 and verse 15. Who are the people that should speak in tongues? Who can speak in tongues? So there are people here, you always tell yourself, oh, I've, I've not spoken in tongues before. You know, should it, must everybody speak in tongues? I mean, so if you came from a Catholic setting, you know, you would struggle with that. If you came even from a setting like a Baptist or an Anglican, where only the priest gets to speak in tongues, or once in a while when you're in the midst of revival. So, and then, um, so it breaks out and you begin to speak in tongues. And like I say, the truth is that uh, even if you don't speak in tongues, you are going to make heaven. It's not a requirement for making heaven. You'll make heaven if you can't speak in tongues. But I'm just wondering how it's going to be difficult for you on earth to live a victorious life, even in the times that we are in. And how your fellowship with the Holy Spirit can be strong without speaking in tongues. Because God's responsibility is very simple. What God shows you, you know, is grace. Now, what God shows you is love. What Jesus gives you is grace. It's only the Holy Spirit that gives you fellowship. That's why he said, for the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, what they are giving you is different. So God is showing you love. Jesus is giving you grace every day. But the only one that gives you fellowship, that connection is simply the Spirit of God. So Acts chapter 16 and verse 50. So it says that, and these signs... Okay, and she was baptized. Sorry, Mark, Mark 16, 15. 
And he said to them, go ye into the world and preach the word, the gospel to every creature. Verse 16. Verse 16 says, And he that believeth is baptized, and he shall be saved. Anyone that does not believe in him shall not be saved. That's verse 16. Then verse 17. See what verse 17 says. And these signs shall follow them that what? Believe. So who can speak in tongues? Anybody that believes. Who can have an upper room experience? Anyone that believes. And when he says everyone, it means anybody. Whether young, old, whether fat, thin, anybody. If you believe. So who are the people who can speak in tongues? Anybody that can believe. Anybody that can believe. Anybody that can believe. Anybody that can believe. So can I tell you something? Have you read the scripture that said even demons believe, right? Anybody that can believe can speak in tongues, can operate in that dimension. So even demons can speak in tongues. So, and, and that's why you must be careful. Because it's not everything you hear. When the Bible says, check all spirit. I remember many years ago on campus, we were trying to cast out the demon. You know, and as we were speaking in tongues, the demon too was doing his own. So, they believe. The requirement is to believe. To believe. So anybody who believes can speak in tongues. So our faith is in the gospel. Our faith in the gospel is what gives us the experience. The gospel is simply about the death, the burial, and the resurrection. Now, the gospel is not about so much of, of, his, of his birth. It is more about his what? Death. Because death, burial, resurrection. And this is very simple. What separates the Old Testament from the New Testament is not the pages of the books. It's not the pages of the Bible. No. That's not what separates the Old and the New. And I hope you know Matthew is not New Testament. Mark is not New. It's not, in the, it's not gospel. Yeah, the gospel started after he died. The gospel began after his death. So, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is not even the gospel. Because those things were eyewitness accounts. He was still alive. So the gospel began. And so everything about the old and the new is about what do you call the before the cross and after the cross. So when you say before the cross and after the cross, everything written before the cross is Old Testament. Everything written after the cross is New Testament. And what makes it new is the Spirit. The way the Holy Ghost was functioning in the old is not the way it's functioning in the new. In the old is upon, in the new is within. So it, what, makes it is, what makes it new is the spirit. So it's like you doing something every day, you know, and then you're not getting results. Then one day the spirit of God comes upon you and you do it unusually and you're asking yourself what is new is the spirit. So the presence of the spirit is what changes things to be new. So if you want things to be new, if you want to be new, it must be by the Spirit. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So they that believe, he said those are the people. And the gospel is about the death, is resurrection. So he, they all spoke in tongues. Everybody that believed, they spoke in tongues. So even if you can't speak in tongues tonight, you will speak in tongues. Amen. Amen. I remember when we were having a maturity class, I think the maturity student, the final class is always with me. So we talk about the, the spirit. And when I told the last set of you, I said, oh, all of you are looking fine and good now. But in the next five minutes, you will look this touche again. And they were just all cool and nice, you know. And in five minutes, and I said, and, and everywhere, pow, and they began to speak. And they said, oh, but you told me you can't speak in tongues. When I asked you can't speak in tongues, the person now began to stammer. Can, you that you were speaking English well. You, now you have to stammer to answer. You know why? Because tongue is stammering lips. You can be learned, but when you get into the spirit, you stammer. You can't speak. That's why I said the learned says I can't speak it. Because they had to use it, so much of logic to explain it. So much of logic. Glory to God. So they that believe, and the Bible says that they were all filled up. They were all filled up. Let's, let's be sure of that statement that they were all filled by the Spirit. Let's go to Acts chapter 8 and verse 12. We'll do three readings there. Three readings there. Glory to God. Glory to God. Acts chapter 8. Let's start from verse 12. Let's start from verse 12. When they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus, they were baptized both men and what? Women. Moving fast. 13. Then Simon himself believed also when he had baptized. He continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and the signs that were done 
verse 14. Then now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they said unto them Peter and John. And verse 15, who when they, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. And he just told them that they will receive the Holy Ghost. And in verse 16, see what happens. The Bible says that for as yet as he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. So everybody that believed, they got filled. So everybody can be filled. Anytime you're in the Holy Ghost meeting, everybody can be filled. You can be filled. Another account that explains that Acts chapter 10 and verse 42. Acts 10, 42. We read down to 48. Then the next one will be Acts chapter 19, verse 1. So Acts 10, 42 to 20. Let's look at another experience. Is it true that everybody can be filled in every meeting? Is it true? And they commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that which I'm going to make you read because when you say Bible study, you must read it's Bible study. It's Bible study. So you go into the Bible. Hmm? So we've been preaching at you too much and uh, I noticed that when you're not doing yay, yeah, hmm, 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 asha, you start sleeping. He commanded unto us to preach the gospel and to testify that which was ordained by God to be the judge of quick and the dead for the three. To him give him Give all the prophet witness that through him his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remissions of sins. 44. While Peter yet spoke this word, while he yet spoke this word, the Holy Ghost fell on how many of them? All of them which heard the word. The Holy Ghost fell upon all of them that heard the word. So every time you are under that pillar, everybody, 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 Receives the Holy Ghost and they get filled. Go to Acts chapter 19 and verse 1. So in every account in Acts of Apostle, you will find out where they were, they were getting filled with the Spirit. So Acts chapter 19 and verse 1. It came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul having passed through the upper coast came to Ephesus finding the disciples. Verse 2. I'm going to take it down to verse 7. He said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Since you believed. Do you see that? Since you believe that you received the Holy Ghost, and they said unto him, We have not as much as that. We don't know about the Holy Ghost that much. Then in verse 3, and he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? Who baptized you? Is it John the Baptist? Verse 4. He said, Yes. We came from Anglican churches. We came from nothing. So verse 5. When they heard this, they were all baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They just heard. They just heard. So go to verse 6. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came upon them. Do you see that? And they spoke with what? Tongues. And what? Prophesied. And they prophesied. What is prophecy? That which was spoken. They brought it out. Then verse 7. Let's see verse 7. Although we're done with that. And all the men were about what? 12 of them. So anybody who believes can get filled. Now how do you minister the experience of the Holy Ghost? Now let's go back to Acts chapter 2 now. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 explains to you that they were all gathered together in one place. And that's why when people are gathered together, Christians don't know how powerful they are when they gather together in one place. Apart from who is talking to you and you are, because we always think that you are coming to receive. You don't even know that even the energy of you sitting next to another believer is so powerful to do something in the life of a believer. I mean, so we need to begin to get church out of that mode that we are coming to listen to a man of God. You are the man of God that came to church. So the person seated next to you can receive a miracle through you. Can we stop that religion and stop overhyping men of God? Is the, he didn't mention pastor here. He said believer. How many believers are here? So if you are a believer, that means you can minister healing. You can minister deliverances. You can. So what stops you from entering into a place and if there's a demon hiding and you didn't even know and the demon begins to scream? Just being a believer. So it's not about the man. It's about you. It's about you. Who is the church? The people that came. I'm talking about people who are born again. If you're not born again, I'm not talking about you. But if you're born again, I'm talking, you are the man of, you came. You came with your power. You came with it. Then you know what you do? You came to charge up every other person. 
So by the time you bring your own charger, I come with my charger, we connect together. That's powerful. It's powerful. That's what the Bible said that we make tremendous power available. Tremendous power. So when the day of Pentecost, so everybody gathers together in one place. Number two, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And number three, they began to speak in tongues. It's very simple. When you're filled in the Spirit, you will begin to speak in tongues. So it's not that somebody will tell you, begin to repeat after me, say, ba 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 you say, ba 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 la 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 No, they don't do those rehearsals. Once everybody is filled with the Holy Ghost, everybody will speak in tongues. Once your car battery is working and everything is fine, turn on it, it will work. And the car will move. So they receive the Holy Ghost and see, these are the points of contact. I need to run fast. I'm almost done with the little foundation I want to do. So, these are the points of contact. Number one, there must be a personal or a corporate prayer. There must be a coming together. So when the Bible says that do not forsake the gathering of all the believers, it's not saying that, um, it's just saying that you don't know how powerful and how important you are when you show up in the church. At every time there's such a gathering. You don't know how powerful. So you have become so helpless that you feel that I'm going to get a refill. So you want to go and take. You want to go and take. People need, begin, people need to be coming to give. You need to come to give. Personal and corporate prayer. Every time people are gathering, Luke 24 and 49. Every time people are gathered to pray, the Holy Ghost comes down. The Holy Ghost comes down. The moment they begin to pray, it comes down. Suddenly, we just begin to pray. And as we begin to pray, you will see that the atmosphere will change. And once it changes, people begin to speak in tongues. Some of you now begin to stammer. What you want to say, you now don't know how to say it. You that can speak English, everything will now be looping inside. Then because of that, you can now fall down. Because of that, you can move, you can shake. It depends on your own drama level. Luke 24, 49. Behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. But I send the promise. So there's a promise. But you will what? Tarry in a place, the city of Jerusalem, until you endued with what? Power on earth. So there's a promise. But you need to be in one place. So there is a place. Nathaniel knew what he was singing. There is a place. A place of personal prayer, it can happen in your bedroom. In the place of corporate prayer, you see it happen. Let's go back to Acts chapter 1 that you know. Acts chapter 1 and verse 4. Because they gathered together in one place. Acts 1 verse 4 to 8. Let's look at that. Thank you Lord Jesus. We are getting close now. And being assembled together, commanded that they would not depart from that place. You stay there. Because it's magnetic. Stay, stay on that verse 4. So you stay there. But wait for the promise of the Father, which ye have heard of him. So, verse, verse 5 now. We're going verse down to 9. And John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence, not many minutes from now. And when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, Without this time again, it was just one funny spiritual transmission. You know, sometimes you'll be reading scripture, just who just transmitted this? This was not supposed to be there. They you now jump back to what they were saying. It's like Act 1, Sin 1, Act 1, Sin 1. Suddenly, a statement comes for Act 1, Sin 5. Then you jump it. You have to go down to now come back to understand what they are saying. So, can we jump this guy here? Asking for the kingdom to be revealed. Can you jump this guy here? Then, verse 8. Say, say this is what we are saying. But you shall receive what? Power. Because they are in a place. When after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, then you shall be my witness. So, visibility. Visibility that comes by the Holy Ghost. Comes when you have received power. Then God now begins to distribute you into territory. There's no way you can, you can calculate your way into territories. But with stammering lips, you can walk into territories before your physical body get there. And that's an experience you must have. You can speak to America before you ever get there. With your stammering lips, you can get into Asia before you ever get there. And honestly, 
Because your tongue is a signature of the spirit. Every time you speak in tongues over territories, you just bought lands there. Something will take you there. And you're going to be my witnesses. Why? Because they are in a place. So prayer does it. Number two thing, number two thing, which is called the point of contact, is the hearing of faith. The hearing of faith. Mm. When you begin to, Galatians 3, 5, when you begin to hear words of faith, it helps you. And that's why I try to listen to messages in the car or put on a worship inside the car. So I try to surround everywhere I am with utterances, whether in songs or in words, whether in my office or in the car. So I, I can practically live with the word all, 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 all through the day. So I wake up many hours, you know, I do many readings and some prayings, probably about five to six hours in the morning before I step out of my house. So when I step out of my house into the car, I'm, I have the word there, I have a worship there. And that goes on. Then when I step out of the car, I get into the office. I have my gadget to listen to it or listen to or meditate. And once I get into my office, there's a book that I know the book that I'm reading is already on the table. Once I'm out of here, I'm getting back into the car. It's called the hearing of faith. It helps you to be filled all through. So it's like you looking for 24 hours to be filled. Because every time you are not in the spirit, that's when you lose a season. And I've lost too many seasons in my life. I don't want to lose any again. I don't want to lose any. To whom we gave place. That's not what I'm looking for. Go to Galatians 3, 5. Galatians 3, 5. Okay, give me 2, 5 for my screen. He therefore that ministered to you the Spirit and walked miracles amongst you. He doeth it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. That when somebody ministers the Spirit to you, ministers miracles to you, is it by the law? He said it's obviously not by the law. It's by the hearing of faith. It's by the hearing of faith. If you go to Acts of Apostle 14, you're going to do a lot of reading. Acts 14, verse 7. There was an impotent man in Lystra. An impotent man in Lystra. No, but they were not praying. Acts 14, 7. And, they, and there they preached the gospel, verse 8. And there sat a man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who had never walked. They were just preaching and they were talking about faith. The same heard Paul speak. Paul was just preaching somewhere. He heard Paul speak. And steadfastly beholding him, perceiving that he had faith to be healed. He was just the hearing of faith. Verse 10. He was just hearing what they were talking about. And that's why you must always keep, you must keep hearing. You keep hearing. Acts chapter 10. Um, Romans chapter 10. You don't need to show that. Don't show that. Romans chapter 10, verse 8 to 10. Do not say, who shall ascend that? Who shall say, who shall go down to the deep of the earth? Say, do not say that. He said, but the word is near you. The word of salvation, which you preach, is in your tongue. Is in your mouth. Is near you. It's near you. So the hearings of faith gets you filled with the Spirit all through the day. It gets you filled. And the third one, which is the most popular. Even Cornelius. Paul just showed up in Cornelius' house. And the Bible says, while he yet spoke the Holy Ghost, before he even started speaking, I'm still trusting God for that experience in my lifetime. It's one of the experience, encounters I'm trusting God. But we won't need to explain before we now get filled. You, while, see, there's a dimension, while they yet spoke. So everybody came charged. So it means that there was a communication in the Spirit. So we didn't have to fast first encourage ourselves through the word. They came worded. All they just came for was the experience. The third one is laying of hands. You can be filled with the Holy Ghost through the laying of hands. You might not believe that was in Samaria. Act chapter 8 and verse 12. Act 8, 12. There was a believer who was in Samaria. And the Bible says that through the laying of hands, he began to speak in tongues. Acts chapter 8 and verse 12. Can we read that? Acts 8 verse 12. Even Paul, Paul received, he received the Holy Ghost by the laying of hands. But when they believed Philip, this was Philip preaching, the things concerning the kingdom of God, he was preaching the name of Jesus Christ and they were baptized, most, both men and women. Verse 13. And Simon himself believed also when he was baptized. He continued with Philip and wondered, where is this miracle and signs coming from? And verse 14. 
Acts 1 and 5. And now, when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. Verse 15. After they sent for them, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. He just prayed for them, received the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was falling upon none of them. So when he said, when he even prayed for them, received the Holy Ghost, they did not receive the Holy Ghost. Only they that were baptized. You know, and verse 17. See what happened there. Verse 17, the Bible says that then he laid hands on them and they all received the Holy Ghost. They received the Holy Ghost. Paul got filled by the laying of hands and he was filled by the Spirit. 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 Thank you, Lord. And today is that day which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Today is that day. 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 How this happens, it just happens casually. Keep singing, keep singing. It just it just happens casually. Now begin to pray in the spirit, everybody. Until my holy Because when believers gather together, something happens to them. Something just happens. And it says they are all filled by the spirit. They are filled by the spirit. Until my holy life is you, Spirit, Spirit keep moving over me, me till, till I, I look, look more like you. Till I 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 Jesus has died. The blood has gone down. Look so suddenly there will be an eruption in the heavens now. This is that which was spoken. I just wanted to enjoy the person of the Holy Spirit as it communicates with you. Just and don't be under pressure. my and the moment you log in, when you log in to that, to that web, your tongue will now begin to stammer. Your lips will begin to stammer. That, that, that's to say that you have come in there. That's to say you have come in there. The words will be missing. You will just not be able to say it. You will just not be able to say it. And suddenly there will be an outpouring of the Spirit. By yourself, you begin to get healed. By yourself, you begin to get empowered. By yourself, you begin to receive encounters. By yourself, you begin healed by His Spirit just because you're praying. There are going to be possible experiences in the tongues of men and in the tongues of angels. Yeah, because it's going to be new tongues. It's going to be new tongues because the tongue is a prophecy to interpret questions in your world 
to interpret some things in your field that he would begin to do an interpretation but the graph will just be flowing that you'll be able to connect the dots in the spirit by the spirit for the spirit <laughs>
Glory to God. So we are getting close. Just hold on. We are getting close. When you get born again, what you have is a well. When you get filled by the Spirit, what you have is a river. A river is unstoppable. A river flows. The second level of prayer, let me tell you what's going to happen. It's going to be an interpretation to your purpose on the earth. Dots will be connected. A lot of things will be connected by the Spirit. Some your mind will be fruitful about. Many you will be unfruitful about it. But can I ask, how many of you cannot speak in tongues? You've never spoken in tongues. But you can be humble about it so that everybody can be together. Can I see your hands? You don't speak in tongues. Please, please stand. Please stand. Just come. Come and meet me. Who else cannot speak in tongues? Because everybody in this church must be filled. We must get you filled by the Spirit. Who else does not speak in tongues? Or if you are doubting your tongue. So come. Bimbo, come. Come, my brother. Come forward. Glory to God. You know. So, he says, as they, as, they, as they began to pray, as they began to pray, they were filled. As they began to pray, they were filled. They were filled. So, all of you there, can you come? All of you. Yeah, all of you. Everybody come. If you cannot speak in tongues, you can come, it's your hour. So, who do pray in the spirit? Now, you know, we said the tongue was not for the speaker, the tongue that was spoken was for the audience. So, the people who can interpret the tongues are the people that heard it. So, there is something your world. must hear from you but you will speak it in tongues then they will begin to see the interpretation interpretations of things in your field connected to your purpose this is massive if you flow into this something massive will happen to you so I don't want you to just pray in tongues I want you to pray in tongues with that direction you will hear things. You will see things. You will write things. You will shout about things. Because the aim is that they hear the sound. But the aim is not for you to hear the sound. The aim is for you to become the sound. That's why he said the wind blew it. And nobody, don't, they don't know where it's coming from. They don't know where it's going to. But all they can hear is a sound. And so is every man that is born of the spirit. So everybody that is born of a spirit is a sound. It's a sound. But your sound can be heard at the, at the lower place. Your sound can be heard at the medium. Your sound can be heard at the top of the mountain. So the people who cannot pray in the Holy Spirit, you will just put your hands on them and just pray in the Holy Spirit. Are you getting me? Nothing extra. You just pray in the Holy Spirit. Some of you can be in the front. Some of you can be at the back. You just pray in the Spirit. And see, all of you in front, you know what? Just begin to pray in the Spirit. Are you with me? You just begin to pray. So they're going to get you filled. They're going to get you filled. As they're praying in tongues. You just open up your spirit. Then as they open up their spirit, you will begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. I know you speak good English and you speak well, you know, but you will begin to pray in tongues. Glory be to God. Everybody, can we stand to our feet and just connect your hands together? Connect your hands. Anyhow you want it, hand, maybe hand to hand or elbow to elbow, anyhow you want it. Oh, the aim is not to hear a sound. The world will will ask you which sound you're the only one that can explain it but you must become the sound you must become the sound you must become the sound 
So we're going to plot a graph in the spirit and the Holy Ghost is just going to be making up things for you in the spirit. And it will be dotting things for you. I beg you, this second round, pray it with every zest. Pray with every energy that you have. That's why you came. That's why you came. If you come into his presence, you can't be normal returning. Jacob came, he returned back leaping. Something happens to your physical flesh. Every time you really have an encounter, even with the presence of the Lord. Now begin to pray in the Holy Ghost again now. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Labra Kosha, as I put your hands on their shoulders. Labra Rada Kosha, Labra Tako Lada Vasha Halaba. Leko Tabra da Vako Shalada.
Receive it in your spirit. Some of you begin to see things in the spirit. Your eyes will be so open. Yet, you are not seeing physical things. But you will begin to see things. Human beings will become like a mirror to you. You will begin to see things. It's a gift of the spirit of the word of knowledge. A gift of the spirit of the word of knowledge. Your eyes just get open. You begin to see humans as mirrors and God begins to show. And he will begin to show you things that they don't even know and the things to come even about yourself. In dreams, in utterances, just with your normal eyes open. Then you now begin to see those things. You now begin to see those things. Now for the next two minutes, any spiritual gift that you desire from the Lord, the next two minutes, just lift up your hands. Just lift up your hands and stay lifted like that. And you know what? Begin to desire it right now. As you pray, just begin to desire it. I, I see impartation of spiritual gifts. And you will see it now. You will see it now. Impartation of spiritual gifts. Spirit of the word of wisdom. Spirit of the word of knowledge. Spirit of the word of understanding. Gift of interpretation of tongues. Gift of the working of miracles. Gifts, gifts, spiritual gifts. And it will sit upon you. Because when that fire came, the Bible says that it sat upon them. It sat upon them. In the name of Jesus Christ, at the count of seven. Holy Spirit, I ask that this gift be distributed for the people you want to give it to. And let it rest upon their heads. In the name of Jesus, one. Two, there's a tingling around your neck now. Three, four. 
It's an impartation of the gift of the Spirit. An impartation of the gift of the Spirit. You've so desired it. You've always wanted it. But this is that day which has been prophesied. This is that day which has been spoken. This is that which has been registered by the Spirit. By the Spirit. Araba kosha greto landa prekusta katala lekoto brata kosta kata oshas anidina lekoto zakrato usta kata rido bokoste retikata ambrodo sha five akanda bokosha lekita paras kotalada zekota lata prekoste kete reba katoste kete lepra katosia akato zalata preketo zaliata palada. Zekota la brata kasha. Jesus. Pastor kata. Lekoto parada. Receive that gift. Receive that gift. Yakota parada ushta ketelea. Kaso zoto palata. Ekota brata ushta ke. Kandabo kusha. Kandabo koto sekete. Lebrekado shakata. At the count of six. I declare and decree. Let that gift come, let that gift come upon you. Let it come upon you, let it come upon you. Let it come upon you. Lakotosa, Zekota Marashkota, Eketosa Takarata, Lekotos Takata, Librahana, Zekota Lata Abrakos, Abrakos Takarados, Spirit of the Lord. Zekota Bratalara, hold them well. Spirit of the Lord. Spirit of the Lord. Sacrotala Baka Osta Catalia. Fire. 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 Until we are wet, until we are soaked with the latter rain. Until we are wet, until we are soaked with the latter rain. Until we are wet, until we are wet, until we are soaked with the latter rain. Until we are wet, until we are wet. Your glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So, Bimba, did you speak in tongues? How did you feel? How did you feel? I don't understand. You can't understand. What happened to you? Spirit is real. How often do you get filled? Get filled every day. Get filled every day. Hallelujah. Sunday morning we'll get filled again in the three services. Don't miss it for anything. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I said glory be to God. Hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord praise. Give glory. the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. You are the one coming up. Happy birthday. Amen. Oh, that was an amazing service, and I'm 100% sure that you are fantabulously blessed by our pastor. Don't forget, for prayers, counseling, and testimonies, look below and you shall see the emails to message for it. You are blessed.